What's going on, you guys? It's The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. As many of you may know, I'm partnered with PCBWay, and they have a whole product catalog I can go through and cherry pick to do unboxing videos of. Well, this product is something that I honestly wish I had had in the past. I specifically bought my pencil because it had a USB-C charging on it so I could hook it up to a battery, but it turns out there's not actually that many batteries that it hooks up to easily, so it wasn't quite as useful as I was hoping. Well, when I saw this on the PCBWay marketplace, I was sold. Well, that product was the TS1C cordless soldering station. Now, I no longer have to worry about wires hanging off the back of my soldering iron. One of those things when I'm working on things, especially for videos, it's so easy to accidentally hit one of those wires, roll over it with my chair, and then I'm burning a hole through stuff with my soldering iron. So now, thanks to the Miniware TS1C, hopefully that problem will be a thing of the past. Let's get it open and see what it looks like. All right, so introducing the TS1C cordless soldering station by Miniware. Now it does have a really nice box. It kind of clamshells open and it does have, it's got magnets right on the ends here. So that's pretty cool. Open it on up and we can take a look at it. We've got our classic manual and it does have English instructions in here somewhere. Does it? Okay, cool. No problem. So I'll actually know what I'm doing when I'm using this thing. So first thing is we have our little dehydrated sponge. We'll add some water, water to this and then this is what we'll clean our tips on. And then we have the base station over here, which there we go. This is what's going to plug into the wall and we're gonna dock our soldering iron into this guy. Let's put the base over here for the moment and then we can pull out our soldering iron. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's actually a little bigger, but I kind of like it. It's got a nice form factor to it. And our tip right here, which has I believe that's just a mini jack, which is kind of cool, honestly. And then clip that in. It means it's not going to use the same tips as my TS-100 or my pencil. However, it's a really cool design. And actually, it's got a nice fine tip on there, which is what I typically use like 90% of the time. Drop this into our docking station, which... Oh, right like that over here. Clip in. And then what else is in here? I've got a box. Ugh. What's in the box? Inside the box is a charging cable. That's a pretty nice charging cable. USB-C to USB-C. Cool, cool, cool. Moving right along. Let's throw this back. Oh, box is empty. Throw this back where that was. And let's see what else is in here. Are these things? No, that's just foam. That's just foam. Is there anything under you? That's in there. That's in there, in there. Okay, this has got to be empty. I think we're done. Close our cool little clam box. I'm still like... I don't like throwing things away, so I'm like, oh, what can I use this box for? But um, aside from maybe shipping somebody something, uh, I don't think I have much of a use for it. But again, it's a pretty cool box. Anything important on the back? Um, ooh, I can make sure I have all my stuff. I have the cable, I have the sponge, the tip, and the station and the pen. Cool, that's everything. Yeah, it is a three and a half audio tip. Um, now I wanna see what happens if I plug a pair of headphones into this, but I'm pretty sure that's a really bad idea. Oh, so moving on. So let's move this out of the way. And then uh, let's take a look at this a little closer. On the bottom here, this goes, okay, so this screw comes out and then we put the sponge on. So let's go ahead and do that. I've got my handy dandy screwdriver with the wrong bit on it. Let's find a better bit for this thing. And I probably shouldn't have this just plugged or cradled here while I'm working on it. What do these do? Interesting, I'll have to read the instructions and figure that out. Oh, are these like stability legs? Nope. Oh, cool. These are more places where you can attach the sponge to. So the sponge can go either here or here or here. And I'm going to put it right in the front for now. Actually, what do I want to do? Actually, I kind of like it on the side. I'm going to put it on the side. So I'm going to pull this screw out and put it on the side. Smash. Okay, so let's put the tips out. And this looks like kind of a big Phillips. Oh, yeah, that's the ticket. Unscrew you. There we go. I think. Does this cover go on here? Will that work? Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. And then I have another cover that'll go on here. Excellent. And this is going to go like this. Oh, I put it on the wrong side. Whoops. Eh. There we go. Whoops, I'm dropping my sponge, but that's okay. Set that to tighten. Can't grab our screw. Brilliant. And then this goes like this. And the sponge goes 
There. Okay, so we don't need our screwdriver anymore, so I'll put this away. Can't forget to do the peel. That was pretty satisfying. So admittedly, I lost my uh, only USB-C charger. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in this USB-C cable on this, just on a normal USB-A charging cable. Let me move this out of the way. Yeah, and let's get this going. So let's get this thing charging. We'll just pop this up on here. I think set up like that. Perfect. And well, actually, let's do the configuration first. So let me grab the instructions and find out how everything works. Okay, so the manual didn't really help too much, so let's just start pressing buttons. What does this do? We're in configuration mode, and nothing seems to do anything. Let's plug this in. Does this charge change anything? Nope. Still in configuration mode. Let's figure this out. Okay, I know what's going on. Basically, it needs to pair the pen with the device itself. So I'm going to plug this into the, the soldering station, and... Let's see if we get some lights to turn on or something. I have a feeling it's just the battery on the soldering pen is really, really low. So let's start charging. Again? Yeah. Cool. I'm just going to let this sit here for a minute and start charging. Okay, so what's going on is actually because it says config on the front, it means that I don't have the correct power supply for this guy. So uh, let me go get one of those and we'll get back to it. All right, so we've got a 65 watt PD powered ad adapter. So these guys are specifically made for high wattage. You definitely need to make sure that you have um, not just a normal phone charger. You need a pretty hefty charger for these guys. And we need to use the original cable on it as well. So actually, let me move this out of the way so we can put this right here. I'm gonna run the cord over here and plug this thing in. Hey, there we go. Perfect. Now it says switch device. So cool. Now you can actually see. And let's see if I can get my camera to focus on this. Okay, so now it wants to pair to the device, which is this top one right here. I know it's hard to read, but there we go. So now it's going to be heating pretty cool, and we're charging at the same time. Now, while we're actually getting ready here, let's just go through the settings. So you can set the work temp, so the temperature you're actually going to be soldering at. Set this up to like 360. Let's keep going. It's got a nice little tactile knob. It's got detent, so it kind of clicks as it rotates, so that's cool. There we go. It's going to be our work temp. Preheat temp, it's going to heat up to this temperature while it's on the dock. Um, this being the dock or the base station, I guess. Sleep temp, if you stop using this for a while, it's going to revert to the sleep temperature. And sleep time is how long it takes in order for it to get to that sleep um, you know, timeout. Pretty cool. Gives you an idle time. Temperature. I'm going to leave it in Celsius just because I always solder in Celsius. So normally you can you know, switch back and forth between the empirical units, but I like that. All right, it's in their backlight. Actually, if I turn my backlight all the way down, it doesn't do a whole lot, but maybe it'll make it a little bit easier. Yeah, I think it's a little easier to see. We turn it down. There's our firmware version. All right, so let's get this thing heating, and we can see how this thing works. And while we're at that, let me hydrate my sponge. Okay, on a scale of one to terrible ideas, let's uh, let's do this. Careful, careful. I don't know how much water's in this thing, so. Yep. Ah, ooh, that was that was strangely satisfying. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. Let me give it a little bit more. It looks thirsty. Hell yeah, sponge. It's the little things, right? Okay, so while this this is heating up, let me grab the uh, soldering station so I don't burn my mat here. And then here we go. Do we have any more room? Not really, but that's good enough. Let's grab something to solder. All right, so here's something we all know and love. This is a Wemos Mini D1 uh, ESP32 room. We know how these work. We've got some header pins. We'll plop in there real quick. Give it the business with some flux. Always flux things. It's a step I always forget, or want to forget. But it's bad news if you do, because it makes everything worse. Bucks. And now you can see the soldering irons kick down into sleep mode, which we don't want it in. Let's see, do we just push the button to wake it up? Or... There we go. Pop that back in there. It should heat it back up. It heats pretty quickly on the dock. And now it's going to need to get up to 360 degrees when we pop this off. So make sure I have everything ready to go. I have my solder, care of Rabbit Labs. Sent me a bunch of this really, really awesome solder. Find the end of it. It's always the first challenge, right? 
There we go. And let's get to soldering. So as we pull this off, yep, it's bringing the temperature of the tip up to our operating temperature. Let's just tend this tip up. Okay, yeah. Give it a bunch of solder for our first round. Awesome. We clean this off. Brand new tip. I like to try to tin it a little bit on its own. I don't really often use sponges, but it seems to be working. All right, so let's get at it. I'm actually gonna be building a Yeti board Mark III for, for Conda. So this is gonna be the, one of his Wemos Mini D1s for it. All right, not a very good solder joint, but that has nothing to do with the soldering iron. That's just me being not very good at this solder job. Make sure there's a wind up right, because I always like to get those crooked. First one's the most important as we throw the chip around. Just lined up nicely. Okay, cool. Looks pretty good to me. And then let's get the rest of these guys soldered on here. All right, that got it attached pretty good. I mean, it's soldering iron. <laughs> it works actually really quite well. Sponges I'm not the biggest fan of in the world as far as cleaning the tip goes. Uh, but like, again, the fact that it's attached to the side right there makes it really, really convenient. Um, the soldering iron itself is a little on the lighter side, but I mean, I guess the pencil and the TS-100 and all those other ones are really light too. So it doesn't really matter from a negative standpoint. The ergonomics are really actually pretty good. I kind of almost like that it's got a little bit more size to it than um, some of my other soldering irons because, you know, you've got a little bit more to hold on to. So um, it's very maneuverable. Like it feels nice. It's weighted nicely. Yeah, you know, actually, it's 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 a pretty good at soldering experience, to be totally honest. I kind of want to solder another row of pins on here, but I know we don't have to actually watch that. But yeah, it's actually a lot of fun. Now, obviously, the big upside to this is the fact that it's cordless, right? One of my main problems that I have with uh, soldering, especially on camera, is that wire that's always hanging off the back of this thing. It's really easy to accidentally knock into or roll over. Uh, and that's a safety hazard. I mean, I've burned holes in my carpet before. And it just makes it, you know, not anywhere near as much fun to get into a soldering project when I got to break out the cords, plug stuff in. This little guy, I should be able to just kind of have sitting around, just plug it right in right before I'm about to start editing or editing, filming stuff. And yeah, this this will make life a lot easier. You'll probably see me using this a lot in the future, uh, aside from like big projects where I'm going to need to be soldering for a while, because obviously it's battery powered. It's not going to last forever, but um, you know, it's, it's definitely going to make things a lot easier for the kind of stuff that I do. So let's put this back in the dock. So it says to be very careful about it because obviously the tip of this thing is 360 degrees. So if you touch the side, it's going to be bad. So you're supposed to be like kind of mindful of it when you're plugging this into the dock and try not to touch the tip when you actually plug it in. And this is supposed to power from a recharge in about seven minutes. So that's actually really, really good from a timing standpoint because you know, obviously you can't sit there and wait, or you don't want to sit there and wait forever as your soldering iron heats up. So yeah, that's the TS-1C wireless soldering station by Miniware. Super cool piece of tech. I am definitely going to be taking full advantage of this because it means all I have to do is grab my soldering iron and go. I don't need to worry about wires. I can have this thing off my side desk, have it all set up at the right temperature. It's so convenient. Really, the only downside that I see are the proprietary tips on it, because these use the mini jack tips. However, I mean, I can't expect everyone to use TS-100 tips. Now, they're not widely available on Amazon at the moment, so if there's any real drawback, that's probably it. But other than that, um, it's such a great little soldering iron, and I, again, I can't wait to use it. Again, thank you so much PCBWay for giving me the opportunity to unbox and review this product. Um, I am in no way required to give a positive review on these items. However, I do cherry pick what I think are the best items on the PCBWay marketplace. So it makes sure that, you know, for the most part, everything I've gotten so far has been absolutely fantastic. Hey, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching, and we're going to catch you next time.